When we're given information in a chart form with x variables and y variables, we can plot this in an x, y axis. This is called a scatter plot. Excel does this for you. To make this scatter plot, once you have an Excel document open with data in there, click on Insert, Scatter, and it comes up. If you want to see the trend line, the best fit line, click under Chart Tools, Layout, Trend Line, Linear Trend Line. These scatter plots can have positive slopes, meaning the best fit line, or trend line as Excel calls it, goes upward as you read from left to right, or the trend line could be going downward showing a negative slope. The slope is a measure of a relationship between the x and y variables. The closer it is to 1, the stronger it is. This could be a perfect positive one, or it could also be a strong perfect negative one. Anything that's close to one is considered strong. Those that are in the center, meaning r equals zero, meaning there is no linear relationship between the two variables. That would be weak. Of course, things aren't generally zeros and ones, unless we're talking binary code, and we're not. So there are numbers that are in between. For instance, we could have 0.1 would be a weak positive relationship. Or 0.6 might be a moderately strong positive relationship. 0.9 would be a very strong positive relationship. The same happens in the other direction. Point three that's negative would be a weak negative relationship. On the other hand, if we have a negative point three, this would be a negative weak relationship. Or a negative point seven a moderately strong negative relationship. So there are qualifiers or descriptives even within there. This measurement, whether positive, negative, and weak or strong, is called the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient in the population, remember that parameter goes with population, the symbol is, again, a P, called rho. This measures the strength of the relationship. The correlation coefficient R shows how strongly one variable is dependent upon the other for a sample. And your formula? Ta-da! Just kidding. Excel is our friend. So let's look at this problem, hours of study and test grade. If we go into a new Excel file and click on the Data tab, on the far right edge is Data Analysis. Go to what's called Correlation and click OK. The input range is our data. If we want to put this on a new sheet, click OK. I want to put it on the same sheet so you can see it better. So I'm going to click Output Range, grab a cell to put it in, and I have a value. 
That means that R, the measure of the relationship, is 0.48977. Or about 0.49. We could say this is a moderately weak positive relationship. I would say weak because it's less than half, but it's not really, really low. So I use that qualifier of moderately. Before we go too much further, I also want to talk about what's called the coefficient of determination. In shorthand, this is known as r squared. It's the measure of amount of variation in y explained by the variation in x. This is going to be a consistent phrase. So back to our previous example, if r equals 0.48977, then r squared must be 0.48977 times 0.48977. My rusty, trusty calculator. Tells me that the r squared value to about two decimal places would be about 0.24. Using this wording, for this problem, I would say that 24% of the amount of variation in test grade is explained by hours of study. So in this problem, if the correlation between the number of rooms in a house and its price is R equals 0.65, how much of the variation in price can be explained by the relationship between the two variables? Take your 0.65 for R and square it. To the nearest hundredth, I would say that R squared, the coefficient of determination, is 0.42. This means the measure, 42%, of the amount of variation in Y, or which one's Y? Y happens second, its price would come second, so 42% of the amount of variation in price is explained by the amount of variation in X. X is represented by the number of rooms in a house. So 42% of the price is explained by the number of rooms. So in this instance, we're going to look at absences as X and final grade as Y. What's the relationship between absences and final grade? And what's the amount of variation in final grade explained by absence? So we go to data, data analysis, correlation, grab your input, output range, here I have an R of negative 0.84528. We could say this is a strong negative relationship. So R squared is approximately 0.71. Let's use our phrase again. The measure of the variation in Y that is explained by the variation in X. 71% of the amount of variation in final grade is explained by the variation in the number of absences. 0.71.